أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولا السلام عليكم to everyone here on Muslim Space I'm really happy to be here with you um, and I would like to uh, share with you uh, during this blessed month of Ramadan some reflections um, that will hopefully be beneficial but I also want to, before I get to that, carve out some space um, to talk about where we are in this month and some of the experiences that we may be undergoing at the moment. Um, so, you know, we're still at a relatively early phase of this month of Ramadan. Um, and this might be the point in that season we've, where we've learned um, some of our limitations. We've had some ups and downs. Some of us may be feeling um, kind of... Uh, uh, a sense of disappointment that maybe we had certain plans or um, certain expectations of ourselves and we find ourselves falling short. Um, might be feeling like the month is kind of overwhelmingly busy. It's not how I imagined it would be. Um, and ultimately, you know, you might just be feeling that sense of disappointment and heaviness about, um, you know, the gap between what you had hoped this month would be and what it is, uh, you know, uh, what it is right now or how you're experiencing it right now. Um, and I think um, one of the things I guess I want to take this this uh, beginning part of this reflection out to do is just lift us up, you know, encourage us, um, because we're still in an early phase of this month, and there's still a lot of time left for us um, to recenter and reprioritize, um, and and for you to just keep heart, keep faith that there's still time right now um, for us to benefit from the blessings of this month. Um, so in that spirit, I'd like to recite to you a verse of the Qur'an um, from Surah Al-Imran, um, chapter 3, verse 139, uh, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I'll do it al-Rajim. وَلَا تَهِنُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا وَأَنْتُمُ الْأَعْلَوْنَ إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ So this verse translates as, don't lose heart. You know, don't lose heart. So this is, you can imagine Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talking to us directly. Don't lose heart. Don't lose heart. Um, and don't feel sorrow. Don't despair. And don't lose all your hope. Don't lose heart. You will have the upper hand. You know, if you're true in faith, if you're true in faith, you will ultimately have the upper hand. So don't lose heart quite yet. We're still at an early phase uh, in this month. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, help us to really be in touch and to nurture that sense of taqwa uh, that goes along with fasting. Um, with that, I just want to also add a few addendums of, of things uh, at this phase that we may want to reflect on or just sort of um, uh, advice that I'd like to offer you. Um, so one is approach your acts of worship and what you choose to do during this month with a sense of calmness and tranquility. Um, try to nurture in yourself, uh, uh, try to let go of that sense of anxiety that, you know, the month may bring upon you or the responsibilities that you have during this month and trying to balance that out with other, uh, with worship and other things. That sense of anxiety that naturally comes to try to, you know, uh, shed that a little bit, you know, if you can and try to lean into a sense of, of um, centeredness and tranquility as you approach your acts of worship. Um, and ask yourself maybe what are what are practices or things that I can do to slow down a little bit and to get in touch with and nurture a sense of stillness. You know, what brings stillness uh, to my Ramadan? What brings stillness to my life? Despite all of the various tasks that we have to do during this month, um, you know, uh, whether it's running last second uh, to get some food for, for um, iftar or whether it's... Um, you know, just trying to keep up with the, with the, the daily responsibilities that we have outside of Ramadan. Just what can I do to still uh, myself a little bit? I think that's just a very important thing for all of us to keep in mind. Um, the other thing I'd like to kind of point to at this point uh, of, uh, of Ramadan is that, you know, focus on your quality, focus on the quality of the worship, um, uh, focus on making it meaningful, F focus on the, the psalm, the fast being a means of really connecting your heart to God. Uh, and so ask yourself, how can 
I center quality over quantity. How can I really make it something meaningful, something small, but something consistent? Um, these are all things that you might want to consider as you figure out how you want to reprioritize or recenter yourself at this point of the month. Um, the other thing that I think it's important for us to recall, especially if we're feeling disappointed, is just that, you know, remind yourself, affirm yourself, recall to yourself that you are doing a lot. You are doing a lot. You know, if you're able to fast, if you're not sick or traveling or are not exempted for other reasons, and you're able to do fulfill that basic obligation that God has asked you and invited you and called you to uphold, then you're doing uh, an important part of this month. Um, and you should feel proud of that. You should feel proud of the fact that you're able to carry out and fulfill a very central part of this month, which is the fasting or the central part of this month. Um, so remind yourself that you're doing a lot, uh, even when you fall short of your expectations, to realize that um, you're still carrying a lot, you're still doing a lot, so mashallah. Uh, and, you know, uh, I hope you'll take a moment to really step back and appreciate that, you know. And you're just doing what you are doing, and whatever you are doing, know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves and appreciates you for it. He is a shakur, and his appreciation is no match for our appreciation. Um, so he is truly appreciative of, of, of the things that you are able to do. So reminding yourself of that, that what you offer to him in sincerity, whatever the amount, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a shakur and he is appreciative. And that we simply center the sincerity behind our actions, that we center our um, intentionality and our mindfulness um, during this phase as we're trying to get um, you know, recalibrate and figure out how we're going to move forward in this month, inshallah. Um, so that's sort of the preface of what I wanted to share with you is, you know, just a little bit of upliftment. There's still time. There's still a way to recenter ourselves during this month. And inshallah, we will, um, you know, we shouldn't lose hope and we should keep faith and keep heart that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will deliver us, inshallah. Um, so what I wanted to do for this khutbah, uh, and it'll be uh, fairly briefly, is just reflect on a few ayat of uh, Qur'an, um, given that it is the month of the Qur'an, and this is a time for us to reflect on the Qur'an. I'm hoping that this reflection, this tadabbur on some of these ayat will prove fruitful. Um, whatever I share is not uh, a conclusive you know, explanation or tafsir, but it's just some reflections and associative thoughts that have come to me uh, and it's an invitation for you to also reflect alongside me. So as you hear me sharing this with you, I invite you to ask yourselves, you know, what is this bringing up for you? What sort of um, connections, stories, associations come up for you as I share um, my reflection on these ayat? So you can kind of join me in that process of, of reflection. Um, so in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, tells us, uh, and I'll recite the Arabic first, ثُمَّ قَسَتْ قُلُوبُكُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ ذَلِكَ فَهِيَا كَالْحِجَارَةِ أَوْ أَشَدُّ قَسْوَةِ وَإِنَّ مِنَ الْحِجَارَةِ لَمَا يَتَفَجَّرُ مِنْهُ الْأَنْهَارِ وَإِنَّ مِنْهَا لَمَا يَشَقَّقُ فَيَخْرُجُ مِنْهُ الْمَاءِ وَإِنَّ مِنْهَا لَمَا يَهْبِتُ مِنْ خَشَّةِ الله uh, this is translates as even after that your hearts became as hard as rocks as rocks or even harder so even after that your hearts became as hard as rocks or even harder for indeed there are rocks right there are rocks that from which burst out streams or spring out rivers from these hearts. For indeed there are rocks from which streams spring out or rivers spring out or burst out or burst forth. And some from, and now we're still talking about stones, and there are some stones from which water comes when they split open. And others which fall down in awe of God or descend or sink in fear of God. What, and God is not unaware of what you do. Um, so there's a metaphor that this verse essentially presents us with. It begins with this sense that, um, you know, you're, you have hearts that are as hard as rocks and perhaps harder, right? So there's this sense that um, people, human beings, um, if they're not sensitized um, to hearing 
and receiving from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they can tend to harden up uh, and get sedimented and not, not have the ability to be penetrated, right? Not have the ability to be affected uh, by the divine, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by his call. Um, and then it goes on, and this is the part that I really want to focus on, to three kinds of hearts, but in this case, right, the three kinds of stones or hearts, uh, or rocks, excuse me, the three types of rocks, right? So the first one is the kind of rock that bursts forth with rivers or streams, right? Uh, the second kind of rock is the rock that splits and some water comes out of it. And the third kind of rock is that sinks in awe of God. So there's three types that we're given here. And I just want to reflect uh, with you on the imagery uh, in terms of what we're provided and how this might relay, relay, relate back to us, especially in our journeys during Ramadan. Um, so starting from this place of hardness, you know, we enter Ramadan with certain set patterns. Um, perhaps we enter in a state of, you know, relative uh, heedlessness or unawareness. Um, we're not as attuned uh, to our spirituality um, and we're sort of maybe stuck in certain patterns or habituated to certain patterns that aren't the best for us. So we start in this sort of uh, place of hardness and stuckness perhaps as we're entering this month, you know, we're really trying to work on these habits and transform ourselves, but perhaps we enter in a more sedimented and, and hard state. Um, certain experiences, certain feelings may be sort of have be sitting in our hearts from the year that's passed. So we come to the month with all of this, um, you know, fixated habits and perhaps certain feelings and experiences we're still trying to process. Um, one of the first things that I feel this similitude offers us is uh, the sense that there's always, always potential for growth and transformation. That there's uh, always a chance for us to really be transformed no matter how hard the surface may be, no matter how tough that sediment may be, that there's always an opportunity for, you know, rivers and streams to burst forth from our hearts, for our hearts to become alive again, for our hearts to breathe again, that that potential may be dormant, but it's always there. It's always there. Um, and that when the waters of our stir, uh, souls are stirred, inshallah, during this month of Ramadan, if we can sort of get in the way of the gusts of mercy that are all around us during this month of Ramadan uh, and stir our souls and get access to that real life connection with our spirituality, with, uh, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with our sense of generosity and, and openness, the way the Prophet وسلم, was generous during this month, um, with a sense of our devotion and, and sort of... Um, a mindfulness of who we are leaving, what we are leaving for, and uh, what we are striving for uh, in terms of leaving bad habits or leaving sinful acts and trying to move towards holistic and healthy and good uh, acts that are worthy of the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, all of this, inshallah, stirring the waters of our soul. And, and in the process, inshallah, not only can it transform us, you know, not only can it kind of uh, push through that sedimented rock, but it can also have the potential then to nourish others. You know, if streams come forth from the hearts, if rivers come forth from the hearts, it can be life-giving to all those that are around us, to our family members, to our friends, to some relationships um, that we've been working on, um, that they too then can drink from the streams of our hearts. You know, so I think the, the first sort of reflection that came to my mind was, just how how much potential there always is no matter how sedimented we may be in our ways uh, or in, in in our ways of being um, but that when these waters are stirred it can not only transform us but really reach many around us um, the other two examples of the types of hearts uh, sort of appear to descend in their degree of sensitivity um, one might say when one reads these verses so this ne the next one is that when it splits, water comes out, right? So it doesn't have that imagery of like streams and rivers bursting forth, but it splits and water comes out. Um, and then the, the next sort of descending level is that the stone uh, remains solid, but it sinks. It, there's some movement um, from the fear of God or the awe of God, right? Um, 
But what sort of connects these is that all of these are stones that are movable in some capacity, that are that are transformable, that are malleable in some way. Um, and they are uh, perhaps um, described to different degrees or describing different degrees of sensitivity, but they are nonetheless described in a positive light. Um, so uh, what, what's connecting them is the sense of receptivity or the degree of receptivity and sensitivity. Um, uh, to that, I would just add that, you know, um, this idea of a stone that's movable, um, that is able to receive and feel and be sensitive, that, that's alive, this heart that's alive, um, may, may be sort of hard on the surface, but um, in all of these cases, or in, in, in the, in, within all of these cases, there's some movement within this hard surface, right? So there's some, uh, there's the sense that in the core, the signs of life and nourishment, water are present, right? Um, and this connection point that I made around receptivity and sensitivity, what this draws my attention to in this reflection is how can we sensitize our hearts to becoming more alive, becoming more tender, to seeing and hearing the signs of God in our lives? How can we receive from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How can we, you know, uh, let that deeper nourishment which resides within this shell um, become more receptive and be allowed to be moved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during this month. Um, and also what resources do we need to get there? You know, what do we, who do we need to surround ourselves with or what practices do we need to do? What kinds of worship during this month really help us to inculcate that sense of connection, you know, and reflecting on that sense of what will what will heighten the sensitivity and receptivity to the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, and part of this, as I mentioned um, in the initial parts of this reflection, was that, you know, can we take a moment to slow down um, and also uh, just reflect, you know, given this metaphor of the stone in the heart, where is our heart this Ramadan? Where is our heart this Ramadan? Um, is it open? Is it open? Is it alive and being moved, being stirred? Um, and how can I open the ears of, of my inner heart to hear and see the divine around me this month, uh, especially? Um, the last um, part of this reminder uh, that I'd like to kind of, or part of this um, um, similitude uh, that I want to reflect with you on is, you know, uh, in regards to relationships, right? So this is a month of mercy and a month of forgiveness. Uh, it's a month of letting go of our grudges and working on perhaps difficult relationships. And so I also think this, um, the metaphor offers us something to the effect of how we might want to reconsider the way we look at certain relationships and certain people in our lives particularly difficult situations, right? So uh, if we're in relationships that feel stuck or sedimented or hardened in the sense of the metaphor of the rock or the stone that's provided here, um, that coming back to that theme that there's always potential within this hard surface for change, there's always life and movement there, though we may not be able to appreciate it because of what it appears um, like from the outside. So perhaps a person, you know, in your life feels hard you know, or, or a relationship kind of feels sedimented or stuck in a place. And it feels as though from the outward appearance that nothing is happening, there's no movement. But as we saw in the case of the, the last, uh, you know, stone, which sinks in the fear of God, there's still life there. There's still life there. And perhaps this metaphor can be a way of recalling to mind that um, even in these stuck relationships or these people that we cannot perhaps seem to move uh, in, 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 a, in, a, in a positive direction with, um, to try to appreciate that even if it appears this way right now, and even if this is the hardened, um, you know, appearance, uh, surface, that there may still be small gains and small movements that have occurred in the course of the last year in this relationship, perhaps even during this month, um, that can, you know, 
that are signs of life, you know, that there is hope for transformation in these relationships, even if it may not appear to be the case um, when we look at it from the external, right? So just taking a moment to reflect on these kinds of difficult relationships and perhaps, you know, opening our hearts to see and appreciate the potential in these relationship uh, ships and maybe some of the smaller changes and transformations that have occurred that have been beneficial and trying to bring them um, to the forefront of our hearts and minds so that inshallah we're given more ease and facilitation in, in, in bringing our hearts together um, and bringing these relationships healing inshallah. So I say these things um, and uh, I, I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses uh, you all during this month of Ramadan, uh, blesses our relationships, blesses us to open our hearts during this month, uh, to make the most of it, um, that he forgives us our sins, forgives the sins of our parents, of our children, of those that have passed before us, um, that he relieves the calamities of those that are suffering across the world, including care, that he heals us and that he renews our hope you know, our hope in ourselves, our hope in our lives, our hope uh, in, 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 in a good future for ourselves, and that we place all of this hope um, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We trust Him. And if He helps us, uh, then no one can conquer us, and that He solidifies that trust in our hearts. And I ask uh, that He softens all of our hearts during this month of Ramadan and brings tenderness, generosity, and, and beautiful characteristics uh, during this month for all of us. Birahmatika ya Rahmarahimin. Zakalakhe, Salam Alaikum Rahmatullah.